You want a reason to hate this review right off the bat? Here you go, I'll save you three minutes. Xenoblade reminds me of Final Fantasy XII. Yes, XII. Apparently it's a thing that no one's supposed to like XII. But I've long thought the old dozen to be woefully unappreciated. Yes, its mechanics are almost nothing like any other Final Fantasy. Well, except XI. It's alarmingly similar to XI. It kind of explains it. It's almost an MMO, just offline, and still worlds better than Dot .hack ever was. XII had wide open areas, auto-attacking at a set pace with special attacks thrown in, an extensive quest system, lots of character customization, all traits that I saw and appreciated in Xenoblade. I just happen to think that this outing by Monolith Soft, finally landed here in the States, just does all those things a little bit better. Calm down a bit? Good. For those unfamiliar with this title's troubled history, here's the quick rundown. The dude behind all of those other games with Zeno in the title creates this new adventure on the Wii. Japan loves it, the rest of the world waits with bated breath for a release, at which point it skips over the NA regions entirely, landing next in Europe. After much hand-wringing, letter-writing, and the ominously named Project Rainfall, which sounds like a dangerous thing, especially in an election year, we finally get to experience this butte in all its real-time RPG fight and glory. Two titans, whose names aren't Reshiram and Zekrom, but I'm totally gonna call them that, clashed years ago, achieved a double KO, and now there are beings living on them. But as befits creatures born from conflict, conflict soon rises again, and it's up to this Jekt look-alike and his really spiffy sword to regulate. While he's successful in beating back the threat, the sword takes use of his arm as payment and continues to be a conspicuous mystical object suitable for research by the kind of younger RPG protagonist that always tends to pop up in these kinds of games. Science and dungeon crawling commence as the intrepid band of... Well, the nerd, the dopey cohort, and the childhood friends search for answers as to why the invaders have popped up again and what that prophetic vision is supposed to mean. Until I've scrapped each and every one of you! Rather than having to buy the ability to wear clothes or having a coding mechanism to automate certain tasks, the RPG backend feels much more classical. You've got special techniques to level up, character traits to develop, armor and weaponry to obtain, modular bonuses in the form of gems, what can be attached to said armor and weaponry, town folks to gab with, objects to collect for the sake of collection, and the bonuses that come with collection. Look, you're probably gonna play this game. I, I encourage you to. It's a genuinely good game with well-designed mechanics and interesting characters, even if they're all speaking in British accents like this is some kind of eye toy game. But once you finish, Pick up Final Fantasy XII again. Maybe you'll see it with new eyes. Oh no, please! Ah!